Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well, and it's time for our weekly track roundup, where I go over what I felt were the best and the worst tracks of the week. They're all linked down there in the description box. Check them all out, if you so please. Let's get right into it with just a few mentions. One, our Amazon Associates link down there in the description box. If you live in the U.S. and you are going to be buying some stuff on Amazon, consider using the link down there in the description box. Uh, I already said if you're in the U.S., I just want to remind you that. Uh, Again, if you're in the U.S., uh, we get kickback from whatever you purchase. It does not add to your overall price. It's a good way to support the channel and support the segment. And we also have a similar thing going on with the good people over at Turntable Lab. There is a link down there in the description where you can... Hit that up and it will lead you to a page of colorful vinyl pressings of records that I reviewed on my channel, as well as audio equipment, turntables, speakers, you know, stuff for your budding record collector. And uh, we get kicked back from whatever you buy over there too, does not add to your overall price. Treat yourself, get yourself some music, get yourself a turntable. They got some quality stuff over there. And uh, that's it. The Amazon link and the turntable lab link. Hit those up, support the channel, support the segment. All right, let's move on. First, we have a few shout outs. Uh, one, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross have come together with like a cover of John Carpenter's Halloween that you should definitely check out, linked down there in the description box. And Death Grips came out with a new, like, weird electronic drum jam mix remix thing. <laughs> And it's pretty long, it's pretty insane, and I enjoyed it. But, you know, it's it's not necessarily a single or anything like that. It's just kind of like a weird, odd B-side, so I didn't toss it into the best, worst, or meh sections. But, yeah, those two are linked down there in the description box. Check them out. And let's get into the tracks that I thought were the worst tracks. Oh, God, they're the worst. <gasps> they're the worst this week. Uh, Keep in mind, I didn't do a best and worst tracks last week, so some of these tracks are uh, more than a week old because I tried to play a little bit of catch up here. Uh, One, Will Smith has a new single out titled Get Lit. (laughs) And it is uh, the, the... the rapper's uh, f- first, I believe, foray into uh, EDM, which is odd because EDM is, is not necessarily the biggest, hottest thing right now. But Will Smith essentially hops on an EDM instrumental, uh, hints toward a bit of a fake patois here and there. And uh, the lyrics are awful. The beat is obnoxious. And uh, you know what? If, if you want to have a good laugh, then give this thing a listen. And I guarantee you, you will at least walk away with a chuckle. Uh, that is before you decide to, you know, hit hit the pause button on that and go listen to something else. Uh, and then also uh, Weezer has a new single out, which is titled Weekend Woman, which, um, you know, is just another overproduced piece of pop rock uh, from this forthcoming record of theirs. Uh, pretty much every single from this album has left me very cold and uh, very uninterested. And, um, you know, I'm just kind of worried. I'm I'm just... <laughs> I'm just legitimately worried about, uh, you know, essentially what what this new album is going to hold. I I don't think it's going to be very good. You know, it it seems like with the white album Weezer were shooting for an older sound and consciously so something to kind of throw to the older fans who, you know, love the blue album era stuff. But now it kind of seems like they're going back to, uh, you know, everything as usual, Um, uh, you know, to just... uh, (sighs) I don't know, just completely disappoint people who who enjoy that era of Weezer. Um, you know, I, I hope they're successful with the record. I hope uh, it's well received by some people, by some of their newer fans. But uh, I, I can already tell now, I, I don't think it's really going to be for me. But, um, you know, still shout out to Rivers Cuomo for uh, memeing me up on his uh, Instagram page. That's always that's always greatly appreciated. Let's move on to the tracks that I thought were kind of meh. I wanted to shout him out. I wanted to point him to you. But uh, I personally was not crazy for them, but, uh, you know, still worth mentioning. New Sleigh Bells track out. Um, seems like a little bit of an underwhelming B-side without much structure to it. The tune is cool, uh, but the guitar strumming gets a little tedious after a while. There's not much to it. It's pretty short, but I don't know. Hardcore Sleigh Bells fans, take notice. Next, uh, Ski, Mask, Ski Mask the Slump God has a new track out featuring Offset, a uh, production by Timbaland on this thing. B is amazing, flow is amazing. It's just kind of short and there's not a whole lot to it. You know, it's, um, it's kind of bare bones. It's just kind of a Ski Mask verse, then an Offset verse, and then it's done. Um, you know, it is pretty gritty and grimy, and, Timbaland, and Timbaland's production here really kind of steals the show. It's absolutely amazing. Um, the beat is like so intricate and weird and next level, and it so fits... Ski Mask's eccentric, 
weird style and delivery. So, you know, uh, all the credit in the world to, uh, to him. He's, uh, he's definitely a talent and, um, loving what Timbaland is doing here. Just hoping for something a little bit more full length and substantive in the future, you know, waiting for that album, waiting for that next mixtape. A uh, Prurient has a new track out. The title of it is Nature Come. Uh, it's a kind of tame drone, in my opinion. There are some interesting textures here, but it is uh, not really hitting me. It's, um, you know, not quite as exciting or blood pumping or as abrasive as I like uh, a lot of his music to be. However, from what I understand, this is one of many tracks on a forthcoming, like, three-hour album that he has dropping in December. And, uh, you know, this could just be another cut that ends up growing on me in the context of the track listing. Uh, it's it's a 14 minute monster and, uh, you know, go into it with an open mind, I guess. Porches has a new track out titled Country. This is easily one of the most compelling songs I have heard from this project so far. Like the recording is great. The chord progression on here is like really sad and dreary and um, really kind of tugs at the heartstrings, uh, as do the lyrics and the vocals too. It's kind of short. And from what I understand, this is like one of the last songs to be written for the album or the last song on the album. And it seems like kind of a bit of a goodbye moment or an introductory moment. It's it's a it's a it's a spot that's beautiful, but it seems like for me it's probably gonna have more impact once I hear it on the album. But standalone it's it's a very pretty uh, couple of minutes. Uh, OCs or formerly the OCs or OCs or they've gone through so many name changes at this point uh, have a new record coming out or uh, yeah have a new record uh, this, uh, a new record under a different name it's just OCS and this new track over here it's titled The Fool now this is not the weird quirky psych punk garage odyssey that you may have heard and enjoyed on their last record I know I certainly did I gave it a very rave review uh, but it is a very kind of dreary weird ballad, uh, female vocals on this thing. And, um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a track that didn't really stick with me as I listened to it more and more, but again, a slow burner and a track that I could see, uh, you know, really wowing me once I hear it on the record rather than just kind of the few initial listens to, uh, to do this video. Um, the new Mavis Staples track, which ended up in the mess section over here, I actually meant to put it in the best section messed up on that, but we'll talk about that once I get to that section. Uh, the new King Cruel track. Uh, the new album is out. I don't want to talk about it too much. Uh, you know, this track could end up wowing me a little bit more too, but I like the weird experimental rock post-punk direction that King Cruel is going in on this new album. It's just that the instrumental felt a little tinny and lo-fi and underwhelming to me, but, you know, who knows? Maybe that's an aesthetic that will kind of uh, uh, grow on me on the record itself once I try to get a, a full listen on it this week, get a review on it this week. Uh, John Mouse has a new track out as well, which is titled Teenage Witch. Uh, to me, kind of reads like a little bit of a, you know, I, I, I know that, you know, he's not necessarily a ripoff of Ariel Pink or anything like that, but it just kind of reminds me of an Ariel Pink song, like one that isn't quite as vibrant or as interesting. I mean, some of the uh, synths on here are pretty cool. Um, you know, the vocals are certainly kooky, but um, it's it's not really doing too much for me. I mean, it's okay. Uh, it's all right. But, you know, if you love lo-fi, weird, hypnagogic pop music, uh, then, you know, please do give this a shot. Uh, shout out to Baths, who has a new very weird, quirky electronic art pop tune out titled Out that I thought was OK. And uh, All Pigs Must Die have a new track out, um, the title being Hostage Animal. Uh, should be out on Southern Lord Records very soon. It's heavy, it's throttling, it's pummeling. Like usual with Pigs Not, uh, All Pigs Must Die, um, the vocals aren't, you know, the most distinct or anything like that, but I actually thought some of the guitar work on here was a, a little next level in comparison with most of their stuff. It seemed a little bit more technical and intricate, and uh, the chords were a bit more interesting. The structure of the track was a bit more ambitious than, you know, your usual kind of thrash and bash hardcore outfit. Uh, with like a bit, little bit of a, you know, very heavy, sludgy metal twist. Uh, so shout out to those guys. You know, it's, it's a decent single. And let's get into the tracks that I thought were the best tracks this week. Uh, let's go back over here and let me shout out the new Father John Misty track, Pure Country, which is a wonderful country rendition of the song Pure, <laughs> Pure Comedy, which is easily one of my favorite tracks, one of, the, one of my favorite singles of the year. And uh, this country version is gut-bustingly hilarious, um, you know, though still the original emotion and beauty of the track does uh, stay uh, maintained in this new country version. 
West Side Doom, uh, West Side Gun and MF Doom getting together with another new track over here. Like this new track over here is really starting to tell me, okay, you know, this forthcoming project, West Side Doom, it really could be a thing. And I want it to be a thing, especially since this track is good as well. I'm loving the eerie, strange instrumental here. Alchemist brought it to the table. Doom, I will say, does get outshined by the, uh, you know, West Side Gun here a little bit. But um, I'm still liking their chemistry. I'm liking that they can both kind of hop on very odd production like this and come through with a very satisfying track that doesn't feel like, you know, they're kind of skimping or skipping on anything or, you know, kind of leaving fans in the dust and just putting something out to put something out. Um... You know, it is some very good experimental abstract hip hop, and uh, I'm just kind of crossing my fingers here that this is a album, this is a project that happens, you know, rather than just kind of getting thrown into the trash bin of history and forgotten like so many projects Doom has teased over the years that have just not sort of come into fruition. Uh, give a shout out to former Weezer bassist. Uh, in his uh, project, The Rentals, which I guess he's recently revived. This new single over here titled Elon Musk is Making Me Sad is a very fun, quirky piece of like pop rock uh, with some hilarious lyrics. He's essentially kind of <laughs> singing about Elon Musk, like taking him into his like futuristic society, like whatever plans Elon Musk has to, you know, uh, uh, you know, leave this world and sort of go somewhere else to start a, a new society or whatever. It's It seems like a uh, uh, he wants to be brought on board, and um, I just feel like the uh, the tune is great. Um, the lo-fi production is really fun. Uh, the vocals are very sweet and very catchy. Um, the sentiment of the song and kind of the topic of the song is hilarious. Uh, the song is pretty long. It's pretty. It's very ambitious, and um, uh, you know there's so many uh, interesting qualities about this track that I think are, are really cool. Shout out to Sufjan Stevens, who has like this new project out where it's like outtakes and remixes and B-sides from Carrie and Lowell. And uh, this new track over here is, you know, kind of one of the B-sides from it. It's um, titled Wallowa Lake Monster. And it's a beautiful, very quiet ballad. It's very much instrumentally in league with a lot of what was on Carrie and Lowell. Um, you know, don't expect anything new, but uh, it is a very pretty song, and um, you know, I could have seen myself enjoying it very much uh, if it ended up landing in the track listing. I got to give a shout out to St. Vincent on the song Pills. I think it's an excellent track, although I'm not going to talk too much about it because I'm going to be reviewing her new album very soon, and I don't want to spoil anything, but I do think it's an excellent track. Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings have a new album coming out very soon. Uh, it's, it's obviously a record... Uh, that comes after the passing of Miss Jones, rest in peace. Um, and this new track over here, Matter, Matter of Time, obviously is in their usual very uh, energetic and uh, funky soul style. And, um, you know, there's kind of like a bit of a, a, a wonderful message of coming together and, you know, getting through hard times and so on and so forth, coming through the lyrics that it's uh, pretty beautiful, pretty inspirational that I like quite a bit. And um, yeah, you know, it's just all around a good tune, a good song. And um, just looking forward to the uh, looking forward to the record. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Next, I got to give a shout out to Shamir, who you guys may have remembered. I reviewed like that big record he had a little while ago with all those kind of like dance punky tracks. It was like a lot of a uh, LCD sound system influence on there. It was a little like uh, all over the place. It was very much a mixed bag. Um, you know, just as many lows as there were highs. And Shamir has done quite a bit to reinvent himself since the release of that album, um, you know, delving into lo-fi music, acoustic music, singer-songwriter music, and this is kind of the first song or first piece of music from that new string of creation that's actually kind of like wowing me and grabbing my attention, uh, the song being Straight Boy, and uh, it is well recorded, it does have kind of a very simple, uh, very sleek but compelling music video, and um, it's just a very endearing, simple little guitar tune about just kind of like Falling in love seems like kind of there's an element of like being played there, being confused. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of uh, um, content in the lyrics addressing sexuality, um, you know, queerness, um, you know, but it does like, you know, come from a very introspective and, a, you know, very personal place and uh, 
overall, I thought it was a good tune. It was a very moving moment uh, that I've heard from from him. Uh, you know, as far as again this recent string of more guitar based and more lo fi and um, you know kind of more indie flavored music. Um, you know, this this is like a track that to me says he definitely sort of has a future in this sound, and um, I'm just kind of looking forward to seeing that kind of blossom. I guess. No Age has a new track out uh, titled Snares Like a Haircut, and this is the first song in a while from No Age that I've completely loved. Like, this is the first piece of, like, very noisy, experimental, um, slightly poppy punk music that uh, has really kind of floored me from the band. Like, incredible energy coming off of this thing. The the production's a little lo-fi, but they pack it with some interesting, distorted, and crazy textures. And, uh, you know, there's just a great momentum to the performance on this track, too. And uh, just looking forward to what they're doing based off of this track, because it was really a fun listen. Uh, Mavis Staples has a new track out, a new record, I believe, that's coming uh, by way of Anti Records. And... Uh, <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, the track is titled "Little Bit," and um, you know it's it's a pretty simple, like somewhat bluesy, somewhat soulful guitar-based song. Uh, really, it's kind of the the heartbreaking sentiment and story in the lyrics that really kind of sells this one and Mavis's vocal performance. I'm not going to get too much into it, other than just to say that I highly recommend you listen to it and you know just kind of hear for yourself what it's all about. And uh, finally, I got to give a shout out to uh, Julian Baker, who has a new track out titled Turn Out the Lights. And just like with the last single to come from her forthcoming record, uh, this track has an interesting trajectory to it or an amazing trajectory to it. Like it's so simple and it's deceptively simple, I would say, toward its start and toward its middle uh, to the point where I thought that it was like a tad generic between the vocals and the guitar tone, which is a little plain. But uh, once it really kind of hits that peak of emotional intensity and you kind of get that big rush of sound coming behind her vocals and she's, you know, just like crying out in this intensely emotional way uh, as she's kind of in that final moment of the song. It's like actually kind of heartbreaking and um, incredible. But again, just like with the last track that she dropped, uh, she's doing a really great job of kind of building up to these amazing moments of emotional intensity in these tunes. And I mean, obviously, I hope for more structural variety uh, in this forthcoming record of hers, but, um, you know, it's it's played off and performed incredibly well here. And uh, that's going to be it, guys. Those are all the songs that I wanted to mention. The best tracks, the meh tracks, the worst tracks, and uh, the shout-out tracks. That has been the weekly track roundup. It's all linked down there in the description. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you, uh, hope you got some good recommendations out of this episode. Again, remember to use those Amazon and Turntable tur tur Lab links, and um, I'll see you in the next one. You're the best. Forever. Ah!